Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Uh, I am coming to you from a much more relieved position than uh, the last video I made. Um, so uh, if you'll recall, where I left off was uh, um, the last video you saw that day, we were going to be implementing our, our segmentation firewall. And we did, in fact, do that. Um, very happy that that happened. Um, you'll notice on my board right here used to be written pan segmentation project. Uh, it doesn't say that anymore. I've got two other projects. So what I'm working on this year is the wireless controller migration and the UPS battery replacement project, which I've, I've talked about already. Um, so yeah, I'll just, uh, again, heat a battle. I didn't have time to do any video recording on that day. Um, we were all pretty busy. So the day started with um, the uh, our consultants. One of them was on site. One of them was remote. So we, we got in the meeting, got everything going. They got their scripts ready, made sure they were on the same page. And let me backtrack one day. Saturday, we all met and went over the, the plan. And it's a good thing we did because there were several items that were missed. There were several subnets that were missed. Um, so that was a good day for planning. So Saturday we we did that, and that was about a six hour day. Um, and then uh, so yeah, yesterday they get in, they start doing the work, and again this was all to basically move our uh, the the routing for our virtual routers within our core switch was being leaked to each other, or switch as uh, they were being leaked to one another through a route leak inter VRF route leak. And uh, the whole goal was to remove that route leak and uh, point all those routes to our segmentation firewall, um, uh, which was the easy part. The hard part was the testing. Um, actually, uh, th those commands and doing the firewall took about, I don't know, five minutes. <laughs> and then the testing began. So I came up with a test plan and we, we tested VRF communication, inter-VRF communication, and we tested VRF to internet, we tested VRF to uh, our medical records provider, Cerner. Um, that's the biggie. Um, luckily, very few people were impacted by that because the same virtual router that the bulk of our users are in also contains Cerner. So most of them weren't impacted at all by this, but the servers that send results to Cerner, they were impacted. So we had to we had to double check all that. Yeah, everything looked good. Um, we had a couple of little minor problems with uh, radiology uh, from uh, our remote uh, VPN client, Global Protect. Um, when they were coming in, they were having trouble hitting some of those servers. So uh, the consultants had to run a few things down to get that uh, straightened out. Um, and I would have to go through the issues log to see what they are. I I was busy being the hands and feet. My boss was coordinating uh, with them and she was taking notes on everything, so. Anyway, they got that all ironed out. Uh, we also had uh, one problem with the lab not being able to send, but come to think of it, that wasn't even related to this, so. Anyhow, uh, so everything uh, worked out well. Uh, very pleased with it so far. Um, this was phase two of our network simplification project. Um, I know our extreme engineers are already working on phase three. Um, we still have one problem, and I've talked about this before. And this is the last thing we did. So the, the one remaining problem we have actually predates this maintenance. And that problem is that Cerner is connected through our edge internet firewall. And when we fail that firewall over, we lose connection to Cerner. Now, one of the things we made sure to test yesterday was when we fail our segmentation firewall over, are, is routing still happening? Are we, is the same thing happening? And it's fine. It's Those are all routed interfaces, layer three interfaces on the, the segmentation firewall. So it's it's not having any sort of problem. The problem seems to be coming with our edge firewall failover is lying somewhere within the vWire technology that we're using to connect to Cerner. Um, that was initially a very quick and easy way to do it. There was just one single connection to Cerner and uh, 
one single uh, V-wire just made it, it's a quick and dirty connection basically. Um, but now that we've split those firewalls out across two different uh, data centers essentially, it's not working so well. So the very last thing we did on Sunday as part of our maintenance window is to fail over those firewalls. Uh, we had laptops all over the place uh, running pings and doing Wireshark captures and um, seeing where the where the where the disconnect is happening when we do that failover. So all that data has been gathered and sent up to the engineers, and they are um, at least telling us they're crunching it as we speak. So we'll we'll see what they do. So, but I've got an idea about that too, about how to fix that, and I'll I'll talk about that in a in an upcoming video, uh, how I want to fix that failover. So that way I don't run out of content. Um, so yeah, that's that's this past weekend in a in a nutshell. Things went well. We we got everything done, everything accomplished that we wanted to get accomplished. Um, there's still a couple more phases in this, and uh, we'll we'll just keep plugging at it until we've got a nice stable network here. It's stable as long as the firewall doesn't fail over. So, um, and then lastly, uh, do a little techie uh, content here. So, as part of this troubleshooting this weekend, I I unplugged my desktop here that I'm talking to you on, and uh, plugged in a laptop and did some things, and then I plugged my phone back in, and my phone wouldn't work. Hmm. And nothing I could do to make it work. So. I'm not going to delve into that at the time. I'm I'm doing all my my uh, segmentation firewall work, so we didn't have time to troubleshoot a phone. Um, so I looked, uh, I plugged it into a different uh, network connection, and it worked fine. I plugged it back into my old port, didn't work. So I plugged it back into the port that works. I looked at the IP address in the phone. It's not in our voice subnet. I went and checked uh, my buddy Leo across the way here. His phone also not in the voice subnet. Beautiful boss right across the way, not in the voice subnet. No phone in our area was in the proper voice subnet. So then I looked in the, um, I didn't check every phone, but the phones I did check. So I looked in our switch and uh, couldn't immediately find anything wrong and then i checked our lldp config because that's where the phones get their information is through lldp and there was zero lldp config i have no idea where it went i don't know when it disappeared or why it disappeared but i use a standard template to build all my switches and lldp is one of them um, let me share my screen. Let me see. Can I share that too? Sorry, things just got dark because the screen is actually lighting my face here. I'm in a dark room at the moment. Uh, let me make sure there's nothing. Okay, we we can. I can show you that. That's okay. So I'm going to share my entire screen. Let me make sure. Uh. Wait a minute, I will share most of my entire screen. How about that? Let me hide that because I don't want you to see that thing that I just hid. All right, all right, I'll quit mumbling and actually do something here. All right, I am going to share this entire screen. I hope it isn't too huge and I hope you can you can see it. So there we go. I am sharing my screen. So what what I did was show config LLDP. All this stuff you see here, that wasn't there. The only thing that I saw on any of the ports was these guys. Actually, I didn't even see that. I saw these two on every port. And I noticed that when I was plugging in, um, oh, come over here, this guy, this guy, my favorite little green meter, Link Runner. Um, here in our in our shop, it wasn't displaying uh, all the stuff I needed to see, like the VLAN name and whatever. I was getting the port number fine, no problem. Uh, and that's this port description thing we're seeing here. 
but I wasn't seeing the VLAN and I didn't think too much about it because usually I've got other things to do. It's, it's one of those I'll get around to it things. Um, well, I, I yesterday I was waiting for all the complaints to run in to come in after our uh, fail our uh, weekend work. Um, while I was waiting for that, I thought, well, let me troubleshoot my phone. And uh, so, yeah, digging in, I saw that I'm missing a bunch of statements. And it's all of these these other things that are missing. And uh, so this these commands here, I can't tell you exactly all of it, what it does. Okay, dot one, port VLAN ID. That's the command that actually my link runner gets its info from. So that's where it gets all this info is from LLDP. Um, it pulls LLDP on that switch port and says, what can you tell me about yourself? And if the L, if it's the switch isn't configured to send all that stuff via LLDP, then it just it won't display it because it's not being given that. So um, all these these three up here are what well not the system capabilities, but because the, the link runner doesn't understand that. But the port description and the management address that's what tells the link runner what the switch name is. That's the port description is what gives it the uh, port number. So those were all there. Uh, the VLAN wasn't showing up because this command was missing. Um, Got to tell it what VLAN ID the port is in. Um, the link runner will also display the name. So we got to tell it to say the name. Now this dot three power MDI classification, that's part of our, um, that's used by our uh, telephones. I'm trying to say VoIP, our VoIP phones. Um, so that the phone knows how much power is available to it because it'll enable and disable certain features. As far as I know, I, I'm not a phone guy, could be wrong. Um, and, uh, the same, same type of thing. It'll, it'll, it'll tell the phone it's, uh, I'm not sure what MED capabilities are. You can look that up. I, I don't know off the top of my head and power via MDI. It's, it's again, going to tell it, you know, how much power is is actually being used on the port. So we need all that. Um, and the weird the weird thing about it is ex extreme is here we're we're looking at the LLDP config, right? There's some more L LLDP config that it doesn't show up here with all the other LLDP stuff. And that's the voice specific stuff. So for that, we've got to keep going way down here, there we go. So then it starts all over again at port number one and then tells it, okay, what, what's the voice VLAN we're gonna use? So this, this is where we tell it, okay, phone, this is the VoIP VLAN that you, you need to be in. And that's why our phones were coming up on the wrong VLAN. They were coming up in just our regular data VLAN. It works, but it's that's not the VLAN they're supposed to be in. So this this will tell it what VLAN to actually go out and request DHCP from because the phones are tagged devices. They understand tagging. Um, so the way that just okay, quick sidebar. The phones connect into the switch, and my our computers connect into the phone. That that's the way they work. Um, the phone is actually like a two port switch. So the phone switches understand tagging, right? So the phone understands tagging. So whatever port you plug it into untagged, it just mirrors, you know, routes that around to the second port that you plug your computer into. So whatever untagged port it sees on the switch, it's just going to replicate that on the phone's little two port switch on the back of the phone. So that's what you'll plug your compu computer into. Uh, the tagged portion that it sees, it's going to assume is its voice VLAN. So whatever voice whatever VLAN you tell it here, um, that's what it's going to assume. I need, that's the VLAN I'm going to be in. That's where I need to get my DHCP from. Clear as mud. You can ask questions. Ask questions in the comments below if that was clear as mud. Um, and then the second command that we run, LLDP command we run, is this guy here, which is where we're setting the, uh, um, precedence of the packets or the quality of service. So um, 
there's actually a DSCP portion of the packet, uh, dynamic services control point. Okay, you you real network guys out there, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that's basically a portion of the, uh, the TCP IP packet that will tell, that will assign a priority to the, uh, to the data that's going through there. So that's where we assign the precedence and we use uh, 46 as the value. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what was missing. So what did I do? Um, you see, you, you, you see the outcome, but what I actually did here, here's what I do. This is my port. I'm on this port here, port 13. I configured all the commands. Okay. This is what should work. Tested it on myself. And then, uh, once I made sure my phone was still working, my computer was still working, then I put, just took this copy and come over here, right clicked and pasted it in and all this stuff just showed up. I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it again, but you see what I mean. So everything, all these uh, 40, 48 ports, so all that stuff got the, uh, the, com the uh, configuration they need. And so one thing I do is uh, I come up the, with the script, just like you see here. And once I'm done, I go through and uh, this is just the way I do it. You don't have to do it this way, but this way I know. I just highlight it as green, meaning I put it in and they worked. If I put it in and it doesn't work, I highlight it in red. Um, but this is kind of like my little change document that I use to, to track changes. So, excuse me, I'll set, I'll put a heading in and, and just put in what I did there. And then that way I can come through here in the, uh, the navigation pane and, uh, you know, jump to any, any changes I've made. So, um, we have a change tracking system, but, um, and I do note that in there too, as well, but it's just, quicker for me to come through here and see what I did. So there you go. That's that's that. So let me uh, come back here and stop sharing. Uh, oh, there it is. Stop sharing. OK, there I am. So anyway, yeah, that's the update from this weekend. And that's a little techie stuff from this morning. So there you go. That's it for this week. Um, if you like what you saw, click the subscribe. <sighs> you like what you saw, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and uh, give me a thumbs up. Or if you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I don't care. Um, but anyway, have a great week, everybody. We'll catch you all next time. God bless. Yeah.